Okay, today we are talking about a DIY HVAC supply register booster fan. So you can buy register booster fans on the open market. They average around $60 plus or minus. My goal here with designing and building my own was to make them at a more cost-effective price point and make them out of readily available common parts. So here's my 3D model. And basically the way a register booster fan works, it either sits down just inside of your uh, supply register, or in this case, on top of the supply register, and it plugs into a regular 120 volt outlet. It consists of two small axial fans, or sometimes referred to as muffin fans. And that's going to boost the CFM or the airflow or the volume of air coming out of your supply register. This is advantageous for spaces that have weak or low airflow, like say an upstairs bedroom that gets hot in the summertime because of low airflow. Here are the tools and parts and supplies I will be using in this video demonstration today. Again, made out of readily available common parts. So the axial fan guards protect the fan blades from fingers. The mending plates will be sort of the, the frame. And then of course two fans to make up this booster fan assembly. Remember to keep your fingers away from spinning blades when you turn the unit on. Wear PPE like I did during this process. So here's all the parts. I'm just using tech screws to mount the mending plates to the axial fan. The axial fan bodies are like a cast aluminum. Pay attention to the airflow arrows that you see on the body there. These protective guards simply screw on with four screws. You could also use nuts and bolts instead of these tech screws. The tech screws were just a quick easy way to assemble this. They're self-tapping screws. Something to note, these axial fans come in different sizes, different CFM ratings, and some come with male spade terminals to connect your wires to. Some come with just plain wire leads. These came with the male spade terminals, but they're small, skinny, narrow terminals that weren't suitable for my application. So. I will use the male spade terminals to connect my wires, but I'm going to solder my wires to those spade terminals. I'm going to orient all my wires to be in the center between the two axial fans. And these mending plates you can buy at your local big box store, buy them online, Amazon, eBay, world.com is where I bought these. You can see it's a nice, it's a solid connection. It's not loose or wobbly. Comes with these green ground screws on the side. So I want to make sure I attach a ground wire to each, each fan, as you see here. And I just use uh, crimp on ring terminal connectors on my grounding wires. And again, I'm going to route them all through the center here. Then there's one black hot wire for each fan, one white neutral wire for each fan. And these particular motors are not polarity sensitive, meaning it doesn't matter which terminal I hook up the hot wire or the neutral wire, the fan will still run. I'm going to use this black heat shrink tubing to cover up or insulate my wire connections once I'm done soldering them. Is my soldering iron. And I'm simply using this alligator clamp you see here as a third hand to help hold the wires together while I solder that connection. This makes it a little easier to solder.
So I was a residential service technician for a while, and these register booster fans I recommended to a few of my customers. They tried them out um, and were quite pleased with the result. They found that their upstairs bedrooms got cooler, so they really do work. Of course, before using a register booster fan, you'd want to make sure all your ductwork is tight and sealed properly, that nothing's come loose, that there isn't some other problem that's creating that weak or low airflow out of one or more of your registers. So once I get a hot wire and a neutral wire soldered to each of the connections on each of the muffin motors or muffin fans, then I'll go ahead and connect the neutral wires to the neutral power cord wire and the hot wires to the hot wire on the power cord and the grounds to the ground wire on the power cord. There's a little close-up view of soldering my wire connections. Okay, now that we got those connections soldered, I'm going to heat up my heat shrink tube. And you can use a, uh, a heat gun. In this case, I'm simply using a lighter to apply heat to the heat shrink tube. As its name implies, it'll shrink around my connections that I made, insulating them. Okay. As I mentioned before, now we're going to go ahead and solder the wires from the muffin fans to the power cord. That's what I'm doing here. Now, if you're not comfortable soldering or you don't have a soldering iron, there's a couple different other options you can choose to connect your wires. You can use these crimp on butt terminal splices to splice together your wires, or you can buy a J box with a blank cover plate and two of these strain reliefs, and you can wire nut your connections inside that J box. So your wires from the axial fans would come in one side of the box, your power cord would go out the other side. And you can use this convoluted plastic tubing to make your wires look prettier. So here again, I'm using the heat shrink tubing to cover up those wire connections I just made. Now this is a working prototype. So if you want something to look nicer in your home, you can use that convoluted tubing to cover up these wires. Let's see how it works and sounds. So you can buy one of these programmable plug-in timers to control the on and off functionality of your register booster fan. So now up here in the master bedroom on the second floor, we'll use an anemometer to take an initial reading of the CFM coming out of the register. At around 124, 111 is what I'm getting. 
I'll take a temp reading as well. And then we'll compare that to what we get once we install the register booster fan. Okay, now let's go ahead and put our register booster fan in place and see what we get. So it looks like 173 to 189 CFM is now what we are getting out of this supply register. So that's roughly what a 50 or 60 CFM gain. Wow. Now we'll take a temp reading with this infrared temp gun. Now let's remove the supply register and set the register booster fan directly over the ductwork and see what kind of reading we get. So about the same, maxing out at 173, 189. And we'll take another temp reading. Keep in mind, the AC has been running now for, I'd say, about 10 minutes. So it is going to blow a little bit cooler air now out of this supply register. I know some of you watching may have supply registers on the wall or mounted on your ceiling. I have a solution for that too. A simple way to mount this register booster fan is to use these same uh, mending brackets or mending plates. Simply mount one to each of the four corners like so. And you see those holes right there. That's what you would screw into the studs in the wall or the wood structure in the ceiling to secure this register booster fan to the wall or ceiling if that's your application. Just FYI, they also make these solar powered booster fans where you put the solar panel in your window to run the booster fan. Uh, another question I saw online from folks is do they make battery powered duct booster fans or register booster fans. Here's a 3D model I made to kind of show you how you could wire one up if you wanted to. You'd buy two DC axial fans, sometimes called muffin fans, and a 12 volt lithium ion rechargeable battery pack that comes with a charger, obviously. So you would have to recharge the battery every so often. Uh, you'd want an inline fuse some sort of on and off switch, of course. So this would be one way you could do a battery powered register booster fan. Woo! So now let's go over the pricing on the individual components. All these components I sourced from Amazon you can see the battery here and the battery charger it comes with. You're looking at $38.99 for that kit. Now the lithium ion batteries come in different amp hour ratings. So obviously the higher the amp hour rating, the longer that booster fan will be able to run before having to recharge it. Looking at $8 for the inline fuse, around $12 for an on and off switch that has a little built-in 
junction box for the wire connections. And of course, a two pack, 13 bucks for your muffin fans. I hope this information helps you. Please like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment, and thanks for watching.